All right, we're back here at Mummert Y Block, Mummert Machine, and uh, we're going to talk about porting some cast iron cylinder heads. I know some of you guys have been uh, asking questions, looking at some of these aluminum heads, and wondering when we were going to port or talk about iron heads. Now, I know this is not a Y Block head, so don't worry, you don't need glasses. This is a 2800 Capri head, uh, early Ranger. Um, I chose this head because it's um, very much a part of Ford's uh, 70s mediocrity. You know, this head uh, isn't a strong air flowing head. It's not a good performer. But I think we'll find, as we work on it, it can get better. And uh, so one of the things that we did and what most porters will do is they'll kind of map a head out before they ever grind or get excited and just jump into a head they're going to want to learn as much as they can about it so we went over here in the old school way we looked at the port opening we looked at the sides of the push rod at the short turn i mean at the throat and then kind of made a little 2D drawing. So what we can see is at the opening, it's 1.58 square inches. It's 1.42 square inches. At the short turn, it's about 1.3. Now this head has a really big guide boss in it. And it, it chokes up. It, it's a little hard to measure, get a good handle on, but I think it's about 1.2 right there. And then at the throat, it's about 1.39 um, now for all you wide block guys don't worry we're gonna make a, a couple part series out of this so we are gonna give some uh, specific Y block dimensions and we are gonna talk about porting Y block heads but I think what we really want to do is uh, in this video is a lot of cylinder head porters will talk uh, well not talk but they'll have a theory that they use you know how they map heads out um, where they attack heads first uh, specific shapes they like to use because a lot of these uh, iron heads are they're thin okay and when they have obstructions or turns or curves in them you cannot just start straightening walls out you know you'll you'll blow a hole in something really fast so what they do, you know, is you have to use uh, good theory, good shapes, and you have to remove material sparingly because, you know, ruining a head is kind of a bad thing. It really slows you down. It kills a lot of your work and uh, anything you may have paid in preliminary work getting started. So um, now on this head, uh, we did go ahead and baseline flow it. Okay, so let's see if we can get in here on this. Um, that's the flow of the baseline. So I think it's 125, 126, something like that. And then we made our first step, our little small modification to it. And what we did was we just shaped the push rod a little bit. They have a really bad lip under the uh, valve job. And we just ever so slightly um, streamlined the guide boss. And it jumped up to about 130. So um, not a huge gain, but for our first few minutes worth of work, it did accomplish something. But I think what you're going to notice when you come back and you look here is with the short turn being left alone, we're in the 1.3 square inches here and uh 130 cfm that's that's pretty on par for iron old uh, low approach kind of not very high tech ported iron heads a lot of times at the short turn you're going to get about 100 cfm for every square inch you got across that short turn so i think if we want to see this head move up a little bit we're going to have to get a little area over the short turn but we do have to be smart, right? We don't want to blow a hole in it. So uh, that's for, it for now. Okay, so we just did test three. 
And test three was um, a short turn. You know, we, we made a decent adjustment to the short turn. So when we came back here last, we talked about this head being pretty small right in here. About 1.3 inches over the short turn. And then uh, it has a weird bottleneck right at the, I would say, the face of the guide boss. So um, on this last test, we uh, raised the height of the short turn or the uh, to 1.1 inches. Okay, so if we go down here to the short side radius, the old height over the turn was 1.040 and the width of it was 1, 250. Um, now we're at 1.1 inches over the short turn. Um, we're probably a little bit wider. I'll get an exact number just from some of the blending of uh, doing that. We're probably a little bit wider. So we're probably up closer to 1.4 square inches now. We were at 1.3. Now we're around 1.4 square inches. So when you come over to the graph here, you're gonna be um, probably really amazed to figure out that it went from about 130 to a little over 140. So the light blue line is our stock baseline at 126. And then we did uh, we did just some on test two, we just blended the sharp edge off of the bowl and uh, we just shaped the short turn a little bit. But we left a short turn alone and it picked up four or five but when we actually went to the short turn and we picked up close to a tenth of an inch over the short turn um, then we found 10 CFM so and we accomplished that by lowering the short turn height about 45 thousandths and then we raised the roof about 15 thousandths approximately and when you lower the short turn, it's a little bit of a bummer when you do that because you do have to go back and reshape it. You know, when you lower it, it kind of gets a plateau on the top and a plateau is like the worst thing you can have on a short turn. So you then have to reapproach it from the port entry and the, the bowl entry and sort of recorrect uh, the proper radius up there. And... Uh, but in video two, I'm going to come back with the whiteboard and uh, I'd like to show you some pictures in here, but this port's really tight and it's kind of dark. So give me a break here. Stay with me. I know I'm moving all over the place, but uh, I don't know if you can see in there very well, but that's, I mean, and I'm working on the worst one just so you know right now that's kind of my theory and part of that was because the the y blockers just so you guys you y blockers know out there like I, i'm working on this using some knowledge of turning air that we've learned from y blocks because they have some bad turns too so uh, as you can see uh this port's much straighter got that uh, weird kick it's actually for a manifold bolt in the manifold but it's a clearance thing and then uh, it has a straighter more of a conventional port so yeah three different ports but you know the fundamental problem with this head is going to be the short turn uh the whole head will need to be addressed but uh that's where you're going to find it so like i said we're going to come back in video two and we're going to put up some uh, golden rules that we like we're gonna draw some things out explain some things but uh, I don't know it's Sunday I got a wild hair I've been thinking about uh, the porting of the iron head thing and uh, the reason I chose this 2800 head is because I want to view the head porting more from just the view of a head porter Approaching something that they're not familiar with I I don't I've never ported one of these heads and so you know it's the first Real attack uh, I'm taking on this head. I put a hole in one of these things I think when I was about 14 years old and since then I've never looked at one. So You know 37 years. No, sorry. That's wrong wrong math 33 years later 
I'm going to try it again and maybe try to be a little smarter. But uh, anyway, Mummer Widelock uh, for John and Jeff. We're still here. We're still doing it. Uh, we are making intake manifolds right now. We can walk down here. We just got the machine set up here. And we got these in the deburring booth. So for you dual playing guys, we're going to be uh, getting some. We've been doing heads for a long time. Been doing heads for months. Trying to get that list down. But now we're on intake manifolds. So hopefully some of you intake manifold guys will be happy. So for John and Jeff, happy Y blocking. And uh, see ya.